Thank you for using telemetry overlay. Let's now review one of the most creative topics, maps. The three main gauges to display GPS coordinate data are the GPS path, the dynamic map, and the GPS path with compass, which, at a first glance, differs from the GPS path in its arrow pointer. What are the differences between them? The GPS path, as with almost any gauge, the basic controls include changing the size, changing the color of every part, the gauge is the position, and the path is the route. We can display some tags, in this case the coordinates, change their size, the number of decimals, or their units. We can use the usual degrees, minutes, seconds, decimal degrees, UTM, and so on. And we can keep customizing the visuals. For example, the gauge or pointer can be a circle, so we can see what's underneath. The path can highlight the completed section only instead of the full route. We can change its width or hide the remaining section. And maybe the most interesting controls are in the Shape tab. The map dropdown gives us options for a background. For example, standard would be similar to the classic Google Maps style. The satellite style will show photographies of the terrain. The hybrid one as well, but with some roads and place names. Classic is just a more vintage style that you might prefer visually. Dark is great if you want the path and position to stand out, but are still interested in displaying some map data. And light and buildings is just a clearer option. We will get to the buildings part later. We can use the margin value to zoom out. You can constrain the shape of the background to the shape of the route, but be aware that that will look strange when rotating the gauge. So if you need to rotate it, use a square shape. You might have noticed that there are up and down colors as well. These are used when displaying a third value in addition to latitude and longitude. For example, they could convey altitude. This works great for activities like cycling. Or we could choose to display speed, useful for example in motorsports. If the color changes look too abrupt, too noisy, you can increase the smoothing to some degree to make it look nicer and more meaningful. But don't overdo it. Then we've got the expand visible data option. This makes sense when our data is longer than our video. For example, if we used an external activity tracker and only recorded video for some sections of the activity. So this is the completed part of the full activity and this is the remaining part of the activity, not just of the video. The same applies to many more gauges. As opposed to that, we can trim the path to include only the interesting section by going to Trim Path on the bottom left and tweaking the path start and path end points. But in many cases, it's nicer to see the entire activity, especially when using external data like Garmin Fit files. Let's reset the GPS path. and review the dynamic map. This is a much more versatile map. If we go to shape, there are simple controls like opacity, but also a much finer zoom control that allows us to have our position always in the center and see as much of the environment as we want. I'll change the path color for visibility. And another interesting control is pitch. All the way to the left will give us a classic flat map. And to the right, we're changing the perspective to see further ahead and we get a slight 3D feel. Orient controls if the map rotates based on our direction, so disabling it means north will be up. Unless, of course, we rotate it on purpose. Smooth is an intermediate value that will follow the arrow direction without making big jumps. and full will strictly follow it, even if it has to make rough jumps. But that's fine if the direction is good and not changing wildly. So let's get back to the light and building style. And now if we find building somewhere and change the pitch, we can appreciate a slight 3D effect on them. That is not super obvious in this location, 
But if we switch to a project within a city, it can look quite interesting. And finally, as with other gauges, we can expand the data so the route doesn't necessarily end where the video ends. And the GPS path with compass is quite similar to the standard GPS path, but it displays an arrow in our direction of travel. Or at least, that's what's happening here. There are other options if our data allows for it. So let's switch projects. And if we pay attention to this drone's movement, we will see that the arrow is effectively pointing in the travel direction, the bearing, but that's not the interesting data here. Because the camera is pointing somewhere else, it's kind of moving sideways, so we might want an arrow that points where the camera is looking. If our data has the necessary streams, we will be able to change the value type to orientation heading or gimbal heading. And now the arrow is pointing at the subject we are filming. In some situations, your camera or tracking device might have a hard time keeping a good GPS signal. Telemetry overlay automatically corrects many errors in the data, but let's see how to do that manually as well. If we select a GPS-based gauge and scroll to the bottom of its controls, we will see sliders like wrong speed, precision, fix, satellites. These vary depending on your data source, but they all work the same way. To the left, you are letting all the data in, including any potential bad locations. To the right, you're filtering out the bad data, but also potentially, if you overdo it, you will be removing good data points. So if necessary, tweak them carefully and step by step. For example, wrong speed will delete any positions that would require really high speeds in order to complete the route. For example, on this map, the position on the top left would involve crossing half of France in just minutes. So if we set the wrong speed to even thousands of kilometers per hour, that location will be removed. It is very important that you leave a generous margin between the top speed of your activity and the wrong speed value, just in case. So if you're in a race car that does 200 km per hour, set it to at least 400. Then other controls like precision, fix or satellite count will remove positions based on the signal quality reported by your tracker. As you can see, if we overdo it, we start to delete the good positions as well. If you are struggling with the GPS signal quality of your camera, check out the other tutorials. OK, and now let's get into a much more advanced topic, creating custom map styles. This is useful if you want to create your own layers, or display KML objects in the map, or translate the maps to a different language. It's a bit more involved, but useful for professional use cases. We will be using the third-party tool Mapbox. So let's go to mapbox.com and sign up for an account. A free one will suffice. Once you have your account, go to Mapbox Studio. There, create a new style. Choose one of the base templates and customize it based on your needs. I will not get into the details of Mapbox Studio. They have great guides and examples and the amount of things you can do in there is too large for this tutorial. But see links to some resources in the video description. Once your custom styles are ready, go back to the Mapbox home, copy your account username and go to the telemetry overlay settings on the top right. Scroll to Mapbox and paste your username there. Then scroll down to Access Tokens and copy your default public token or a standard one that you have created. Paste it in the standard token input and then create a second different access token. Give it a name and for this one enable the secret scope styles list. Go ahead and create it, copy it, and paste it in the styles list token input of telemetry overlay. Then, when you create any gauge that has map styles, your styles will be listed instead of the default ones. Here's for example a public one I imported, Blueprint, and these are experimental ones I created with satellite images of Mars instead of the Earth. As you may notice, satellite images take some time to load, the same happens with satellite images on Earth. But not with drone maps. So if you're using the dynamic map and you have fast movements, be aware that satellite images might stutter a bit. Okay, and that's all for now on the topic of maps. I hope this was useful. Feel free to ask any questions. Thank you to OK Routes for the cycling footage. Check out his website for great cycling routes with lots of data. 
and see you in the next one.